over a week ago now, Donald Trump took what is arguably the best policy action to deal with this unprecedented economic crisis since it started back in March by temporarily banning the evictions of the over 40 million people who were at risk of eviction by October. Now, to be clear, this was entirely self-serving and in his own selfish interest. This is not part of a, a broader strategy to bail out the American people during this economic crisis. The only reason Donald Trump did this temporary ban of evictions that's supposed to extend to the end of the year is because he knows that if 40 million people were thrown out of their house right before the election, there's no way in hell he wins the election. I'll give him credit that this single action might be the best policy decision that's been made since this economic crisis started. That being said, this is only temporary. This isn't nothing to, to celebrate and give and heap a bunch of praise on Donald Trump. He didn't solve the problem. He didn't solve the, cri the eviction crisis. This is just kicking the can down the road until a more opportune time for him to allow the banks and landlords to throw 40 million people out on the street in the middle of a pandemic. The way he did it was very crafty and creative. Um, having the CDC give this order that um, basically a public health declaration that you, it's, it would be a risk to public safety to throw these people out during the pandemic. Now, like I said, this, is, it, this isn't to protect people. This is to protect his ass and keep him, um, give him a better chance of winning re-election. And it's clear that this is his intention because there is no broad strategy when it comes to dealing with the economic crisis. It is complete disarray and nobody's even pretending to have a solution to this crisis. Six months into it, we're six months deep since the CARES Act was passed. This is just a pause. And whenever he, this ban is lifted, whether it's at the end of the year, if he extends it another month, if he extends it another two months, how, whenever this ban is up, all those people are going to have to pay back rent. All these people who have lost their jobs, who have no income, who are getting absolutely no money at this time, who haven't got a stimulus check, um, some of them didn't get it ever, but the people who did haven't got one since months ago, a $1,200 check months ago. Um, these people aren't getting unemployment checks. So there's absolutely no way for them to pay this back rent whenever this ban is up. Again, I don't want to downplay how important this is for those 40 million people who are at risk of eviction, that at the very least, this is one less thing that they have to worry about being thrown out on the street right now, in, at least until December. So that is good for those people. As selfish as the intentions behind it are, it is good for those people that, it, that they have one less thing to worry about, at least to the end of December. But at the same time, are we going to act like they weren't just throwing thousands and thousands of people out on the street for the, during this, the time that the initial eviction moratorium was expired? Because now all those people, up until last week, I know you guys seen the video um, from CNN of when they were following around a, a police officer do, serving evictions throughout the entire day. All those people were evicted like last week. So you mean to tell me that after they've been thrown out of their house, locked out, a lot of them had their shit now because they have nowhere to move. And that's one thing when, about being evicted. If you have no place to go, you also have no place to put your stuff. So all of their possessions, their beds, their, their furniture, all that shit is, was thrown out on the street with them, thrown out into the garbage. So you mean to tell me that now a week later, you're going to pass a, a, a ban on evictions and say nobody else is going to get evicted. But what about those other people? You're going to tell them to go kick rocks? There needs to be some kind of plan to give them housing, at least temporary housing, at the very least through for the the duration of the ban because what the like 
their lives got turned upside down. And you mean to tell me that it was just a matter of timing. If their eviction had been served a week later, two weeks later, they'd still be in the house until December. But since that wasn't the case, now they're out on the street, all their possessions are thrown out, and they have nowhere to go. And the government's just going to be like, oh, well, you're going to figure it out, just like the rest of the homeless people. What? That's fucking insane, and that is cruel. So, like I was, like I'm saying, it is amazing that six months into this economic crisis, the entirely predictable situation of, hey, 60 million people are no longer getting an income. That means they can no longer pay for their bills, bills including their housing, their rent, their mortgage. So let's come up with something to deal with that. Six months and not the Democrats, not the Republicans, not the White House. Nobody has a single serious long-term plan. They all just, as soon as the, the eviction, the temporary ban on evictions went into place, everybody acted like, oh, well, problem solved. We don't have to worry about anything. And then it expired, and they still, months, weeks after it expired, still no plan until Donald Trump put out this order, had the CDC put out this order. So if they were serious about dealing with this, not only are you going to have to uh, uh, ban evictions for the duration of the, the pandemic and the economic crisis, because those two things go hand in hand, neither of those things are the fault of the people who are at risk of eviction. So you have to ban evictions until this, the crisis is dealt with, pandemic and economic crisis. You also have to do something about the homeless people, the over a million homeless people who are on the street right now. On top of that, and the the homeless crisis the before the pandemic, before the economic crisis, was always a choice. There have been multiple studies that show we could completely eliminate ho homelessness, give ho give housing to every person who does not have a home in this country for twenty billion dollars a year. Twenty billion dollars in the federal budget, that is nothing. We spend over six hundred billion dollars on the Pentagon every single year. $700 billion in the Pentagon, to be clear. We give $80 billion to subsidize Wall Street banks and financial investors every single year. So you mean to tell me that in the richest country in the history of mankind, it is inconceivable for the government to spend $20 billion to completely eliminate the homeless problem, homeless crisis in this country? So the homelessness was always the choice. Now it is even more cruel and inhumane to allow that to be a policy choice. So if you're going to ban the evictions, you also have to do something about the people who are already homeless. And some cities and some states were um, giving them hotels to stay at during when the pandemic started. And that's a good thing. But there also needs to be a long-term strategy like building uh, free housing for them. So that's another thing. And then you have to have the rent and, and the debt completely canceled. It's not like, a, oh, after the band's up, you have to pay it back. Nobody is going to be able to pay back $7,000 up in, in back rent in one payment. Nobody's going to ever be able to do that. So you might as well just throw them all out. So you have to cancel it, not just freeze the evictions, you have to cancel the debt. And you have to do, we have to radically restructure the credit rating system because people's credit now are being ruined for the rest of their lives because this all goes on their credit. You not paying your rent, all this back rent, having a, a, a foreclosure filed in court, having eviction in court, that ruins somebody's credit, and that is something that will follow them for the rest of their life and make it incredibly hard to do even basic things, like getting a loan, a business loan, getting a loan for a car, getting a mortgage. It, is, it would make it incredibly hard to do even those basic things. So we either need to abolish the credit rating system, and there was an argument to do that before this crisis started, or at the very least, radically restructure it so that all these new debts that people are, are getting to their, adding to their credit, whether it's from them not being able to pay their, their car payments or their insurance 
or their their housing payments. All that cannot go on people's record because, like I said, this is no fault of their own. So Trump's temporary ban on evictions is a good thing. As selfish and self-serving as the motive behind it was, it is a good thing for the people who get to stay in their house. But there needs to be a long-term strategy and nobody has a plan. And the fact that nobody has a plan means that they never will because it's been six months. Can you imagine if there was some type of financial cliff, financial crisis, that uh, entirely predictable financial crisis that giant corporations were going to be facing? And then the politicians knew this was going to be the case. They were going to all go bankrupt and they were all going to lose their business and all whatever the, the chain effects of that are. And they knew it was going to happen and they had six months to deal with it and they still had no plan. That wouldn't be the case because as we saw, if the, sec there's a, the second there's an inkling that there, it, there might be some type of, of economic hit that corporations and the rich take, the government jumps, they leap into action to ameliorate that problem and to take it off the table completely. And in this case, it was to give them trillions of dollars in unprecedented corporate bailout to the richest people in the country so that they can weather this crisis. So the fact that it's six months in and nobody has even whispered a word of a, a long-term strategy to deal with the housing and eviction crisis, it means that they will never do it of their own volition. And just like everything else, the only way that it's gonna get done is if there's massive civil unrest organized protests and, and clear policy demands made by the people in the street to force the hand of politicians to actually do their job, to actually do something to help the, the people, the basic function of government. So this is just kicking the can down the road and it's de delaying the inevitable. And when the day comes that they, they give the green light to throw 40 million people out on the street, they will be it will be mayhem in this country. It will be chaos because people aren't going to take that lightly. 40 million people being thrown out of the street, they're not going to take it lightly. So this is this is the course that the government put us on. This is this the they've made decisions every single day from the beginning of the crisis that this is the way they want it to go. So they're going to reap what they sow. They made their bed and they're going to lie in it. When when cities are are in in disarray and it's utter chaos. Just know they made that decision. It was a policy decision. It was a deliberate policy decision that they made.